The Police Service Commission is in debt, yes, to the tune of 349.3 million naira judgments, uh, for judgments. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anakon. When we come back, we will be getting into the conversation proper. Stay with us. The Police Service Commission is in debt. 349.3 million judgment debts imposed by various courts for extrajudicial killings, brutality, right of riches, and other professional misconduct by appraisers of the Nigerian police force. And the Edo State drama is not over as protesters and thugs clashed over Adams Oshomale. And I'm being joined in the studio this evening by my guest, uh, Rashid Adegwiro. He's a political analyst. It's good to have you join us, sir. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have uh, Larry Imenike. He's also a political analyst. Thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank All right, so we'll start with the drama in Edo State. Now, Edo State is in the news again. And yes, on the APC Bruhaha, scores of protesters on Friday demanded for the removal of Adams Oshomale as the national National chairman of the APC. The protesters carried placards at the national, or to the National Secretariat of the APC. Some of them, uh, the placards had inscriptions like Oshomole must go, Ole, amongst others. Now, the protesters, mostly youths, were countered by thugs coming from the streets where the APC Secretariat is located, and the thugs threw stones and sticks to disperse protesters. I'll start with you, Mr. Rashid Adigwema, because you are of the civil society, and of course, I'm sure that one of the messages that you're preaching is peace. You're talking about conflict re resolutions here and there. We have been, this, this is nothing new, because you know we've noticed that there's a new growing threat, trend that if a group of people go to protest against a certain power, they have a counter-protest group also, and then at the end of the day, it turns into something violent. How did we get to this point? Well, we are at this crossroad because of our lack of patience resolving challenges. Lack of patience on whose part? Both the, gov the governed and the leaders. Uh, because of lack of patience, most often we run over rules of procedure. I want to believe the APC has its own internal structures in electing and recruiting officers and the deep process will have been followed. You cannot short circuit the system by protest and say you remove your chairman. The signatures need to be collated, appropriate organs of the party informed, and then machinery is put in motion to get the chairman out of office if he has lost confidence of the majority of party members. Mm -hmm. Uh, one state cannot remove a chairman that is lording it over 36 states. So I want to believe what is happening in Edo State is part, is part of the lacuna in our development. In every sector you turn to, it's the same challenge we face. Protest is one of the oldest forms of getting attention of those in power if you are in a democratic system, mostly works in a democratic system. And if the people of Edo State's or maybe several other people feel that this is the best way they can get the attention of the NWC or the NEC of the party. Why should it be a problem? It will be a problem because it will be a long fight. One against 36, because you don't know the popularity of the chairman in other states of the federation. And if the protest should fail, it points to a danger ahead. Even where there are very serious reasons why the chairman should go, the energy will have been lost. We did it once and it didn't work. So what are you going to get next time around? So a petition signed by all those who went on the streets in Edo State it will have been more weighty than people risking their lives, jumping on the streets and encountering talks. Hey, Benike, um, I, my question is, um, if this process did not mean anything, or like he said, was on the back of a chicken? Why was there a counter protest? Why were they so, I mean, let's not, I'm not trying to say that somebody sent the dogs, but they obviously came from someone. They obviously are in support of someone. If the P 
people who came to protest against the national chairman were not so much of a threat. Why was there another group trying to disperse them? That's a very cogent question you ask. And uh, you rightly pointed out the reality of what democracy really means. And, uh, you know, democracy is a process within started here. You know, it has been in existence. And uh, if you look at your dictionary, what it means is government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And realistically, I think the major challenge we have now is that we have some certain characters in government that are not receptive. You know, they believe that they can load everything, you know, on others, whether it's, it's your choice or not, they don't care. And I think it's a constitutional right of every, even if a single individual can protest, you know, by virtue of what we are practicing. If we know we want to, you know, drift into, into dictatorship, then we, we do away with democracy. The reality of democracy is that you have a constitutional right, you know, enshrined in our constitution for one to protest any injustice. Whether one or hundred or whether young or old, it is their civic responsibility. Mm -hmm. And they should be allowed to do that. You see, but what I saw in this scenario is, you know, has been what has been in existence for a long time now. You know, I would say since the inception of this government, but partially, you know, we've been noticing that uh, we have some certain people that are not really, you know, in tune with what democracy really meant. You know, it's all about, you know, coercing people. It's not about trying to suppress you know, you know, some certain, uh, this idea of protest. But this is internal party politics. It's not necessarily the leadership of the country. And yes, whatever you're saying has bearing of some lauding because, you know, the, whatever is happening in the APC at the national and in Edo State is because it's bickering between two big weeks, a father and a son, in quote. But should it amount to a protest where people have to take placards? Does this mean that the cracks in the APC are so wide that they can't even call themselves together to have a conversation, so much so that they have to adopt the protests? Don't talk the, the, the people we are talking about here. We are talking about those that are in charge of the nation. APC, as far as I'm concerned, or the reality of now is concerned, APC is just like the country. They are in the leadership position. They control whatever machinery we, we are using in Nigeria. So whatever is happening in the APC as a political party cannot be seen as a family affair. Everybody must be concerned. Because uh, there is this popular saying that, uh, um, it, it just crossed my mind now, that you know, a house that is in, not in order cannot give anything. You know, there is this way the, the expression goes. I will remember it. So I think whatever that is happening in APC, as far as I'm concerned, house should divided give, against itself. Should, yeah, stand. the house divided against itself cannot stand. So everybody must be consigned. Because they will, that particular party and those that are guiding or leading that particular party, whether as a chairman or as a deputy chairman, has a very Herculean tax. Because our fate is in their hands. So I think one. Since this particular issue started, we had when the deputy chairman of the APC had the same issue with Oshimole. It was like that the house would not hold. And because nothing was done, the party has been divided among themselves. You have this section with the Oshimole, the other side with the other side. And that is why you, we are seeing all these things. And I think what we're supposed to be talking about now is how many people have been arrested. You understand me? What will the law do to those that protest if they are wrong? But to me, they have, they have not committed any offense. But those that we are throwing stones and bottles, and we know where they were coming from. Sorry, I don't know where But you read it, that they were coming from the sectorates. Yeah. So is, is there any news? It's not you. Yeah, but we don't know exactly who said They were coming from the direction of the party Headquarters. So it, 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 it's so clear. But what we are saying is that the police has a responsibility to put so many things in order. We should not encourage some of all these, you know, attitudes, especially from our leaders. It's not going to help us. I'm going to come back to you. I'll take you up on something. But back to you, um, Mr. Adegbemo. I'd go to some of the things that were said by... 
the protesters. Let's just tick it one after the other. They said, and I quote, our message is clear and simple. Oshomole must leave. Enough is enough. He must go. He has not been using diplomacy to solve the problems in the party. This has cost us a lot of states, such as Oyo, Zamfara, Bauchi, and others. So this is not an Edo state matter, per se. It's now a party matter, the general party matter. So it's not just about APC, Edo. It means that there are people who are concerned in the party who feel that they might lose more states if Oshomole continues in the way that he is. But you said something about signatures and diplomacy, but how do you act diplomatically to what a person who they say is not being diplomatic in solving issues? Well, my opening statement was very clear, that in any party structure, the procedures for electing officers and removing officers. If a group of party loyalists deviate from that norm, the likelihood is that the petition or the protest may not be properly accepted or treated. And that's why I talk about doing things properly. Uh, if they've lost four, five, six states, it should be of concern to the national HQ of the party. Because more states going the other way means APC will be out of power in the of under four years. Who controls the national HQ of the party? The chairman. Exactly. But, but we have precedents where the chairman was removed. Somebody from Edo State, or somebody chairman of the party before Shomali took over, and he was removed from office. So there's been precedents. It's part of the lacuna in our development. We, at times, we are too much in the haste to get results, and we become blind to what is what, what we refer to as due process. I'm just curious mm. if, and I do not know, I'm painting a picture or a scenario. What if these people who have resorted to protesting, what if they've gone through all of these steps that you were asking that people go through because there are procedures in a party and it all fell on deaf ears? Then they should put that in the public domain. It will assist us in taking a more Could rational... Could this not be it will, putting it, it in it, the it, public domain with the will, placards and all of the demands the that they're making? The placards and the riots. Because from my experience in this country, once you hit the streets, you lose control of the crowd. And that's probably what but happened as we, in other states. As, as the reports states. Have, have, have been coming in, they were peaceful until a group came to cause mayhem. It's not unexpected. Because once you hit the streets, anything can happen. Are you and saying that history, we should totally abolish from, protests from because history, we're afraid that people will take advantage of, this, of them? From the history of this country, who lumps who cash in on street protests and always tell people for every action you take, do a thorough mathematical calculation of the consequences of your action. You can predict and determine your action. You cannot judge accurately what the response the response that will follow your Should action. Should we do away with protests because we're afraid that they would be hijacked by hoodlums? If you are sure you cannot control it, the most sensible thing to do is to find alternative mechanism. Ah, what is the alternative to getting our leaders to listen to us? Because we know in the space that we live in that they listen to strikes and protests. So if we are saying we want to do away with protests, what else are we left to? What other tool can we, we had use a, we to had get a accountability? We had a, in the last administration, we had a case in Kogi State. We had the constituency of a senator attempted a recall. Because the constitution makes provision on how to recall elected officials. Attempt was made to recall this, the senator, but it fell flat because they could not get the required numbers. But that doesn't mean that is the end. A precedence has been laid. What we should encourage is people to follow that same procedure. By the time you get one or two senators or House of Members or State Assembly members pulled out of the chambers through due process, it's called that others will sit up. The one against Melaye failed, maybe because of the first experiment, but it has become a precedence in our political history that the mere fact that you have been elected, no matter the number of votes you garnered at the polls, if you go sour to the constituency, you can be recalled at any point in time. Emilica, you seem not to agree with this, but in a situation where, like he said, 
this can be hijacked as usual. What other options do we have? I, I because this is a uh, democracy. We, we are not trying to, you know, I'm not expecting anybody to, to, to do more than what is obtainable elsewhere. Protest, as far as I'm concerned, I will encourage people, whenever you feel that maybe the system, your organization, your establishment, the institution that you pay allegiance to are not doing the needful, and just like you rightly asked, you know, we all are aware when the deputy chairman put up a petition against Oshomole, it was there in the news. And a lot of things came up because it was towards the election time. We are the uh, Shomole as the party chairman has this particular advantage, you know, to decide who takes what during the election. So in, in a situation like that, what do you want the party members to do if they feel aggrieved? So it, I don't think we should go there. I, I, I would never agree with you on that because it's going to create anarchy. You know, you are suggesting, you are making a suggestion that if we happen to abide by it, what we are going to expect one day is an implosion. Because you have cut off the channel for people to express themselves. In leadership in Nigeria, I thought where you would have, the point you, you know, I, I was expecting, you know, because it's clear, we want to talk about Nigerian politics. You will discover that we are entering into an era where our political leaders, you know, take it upon themselves or assume, just like if I might use the word of the former president, Ulysses Gobasanjo, has turned themselves into emperors. So are we going to succumb to the wills and caprices of emperors? Where lies the democracy with prices? So I think it's neither here nor there. But then, Nigerians or people, whether in any form, you know, what we are saying, there is this particular constitutional provisions whereby people were mandated, even our constitution shines from it, that you must seek police permission. But we've had so many you know, lawyers kick against it that it's not constitutional, right? So with that, I don't think that we should encourage whatever or any form of idea or suggestion that is going to bottle the people without expressing themselves. What do you, well, what, no matter what? the position you've taken, I think the most sensible thing to do is to have taken a look at the party constitution. What are the procedures for electing and removing officials? If you deviate from that, it's an invitation to anarchy. The APC, finally, because I think we have yeah. just one minute. The APC, I mean, they played all their cards right now. This is the, I'm guessing this is the joker right now. Yes which is they be resorted to protest. Do we see any shift coming anytime in the future, being that this is the climax of all of the things that we would expect from the party, we would not expect a protest that turned violent. So going forward, do we see a shift on the part of the party chairman, the National Working Committee, or do we even hear Mr. President say a word about what is going on? Well, that's left for the party hierarchy to decide. Uh, and at stake is not just Oshiomole, but the entire members of the National Working Committee of the party. There are procedures that put them in place. If they mishandle this crisis, the next thing you'll find is a petition that the National Working Committee should be dissolved. And fresh elections are taken across the 36 states to elect a new and more sensible, in quotes, members of the National Working Committee. This is not the first time we're having this. From the First Republic, we've had this type of issues. Uh, but Rabbi Musa, if you remember, in Cardinal State, was impeached because the procedure for removal was quite clear. Mm -hmm. They impeached him, and everyone's didn't fall down to us. And we find some, in some instances where attempts were made to impeach some governors, and they survived. Ngige is a very interesting case study. Peter will be in Anambra went from one level to the other. He went through, he didn't pull out crowds to start burning houses and burning cars. He went to the courts. He, caught, he sought courts procedures. 
He lost first round, second round. Well, at, at the end of these steps, he was climbing. He, he finally came back as governor of Anambra State. So I think we, we need to start, not just in politics, in every facet of our lives. We need to start, to start engraving to our DNA the energy to follow due process. Once the laws are made, okay. we should do our possible best. That's why the courts are there. Okay. If for any reason, Obasanjo when he was president, took states, six states to court over the issue of uh, derivation. As the president taking six governors to court. And he was quick to tell anybody that protested to anything during his first time in office in 1999 that there are two governors to court to test the democratic setting of this country. If you agree with your governor, take the governor to court. I took six governors to court as president of Nigeria. Okay, all right. MNK, quickly, um, same question. What do you see happening in the next few weeks? Is there going to be a shift of any sort? Uh, looking at the party leadership, I don't think uh, with the character of the person, you know, uh, I've known Oshomole for a long time, and uh, even as a, a labor leader, we know his antecedents. So I think uh, he might not back down mm -hmm. because he believes in himself, and uh, sometimes people have suggested arrogance, you know, you know, that's a suggestion, that's their view. But then I think uh, what I'm looking at is the message. You know, the message sounds very clear. And if you look at what has been happening since he took over as the party leader of APC, it's very clear that the party has not known peace. So I think what the party, you know, the, the, the major actors in the party, you know, both the party leader and so many other people, they, they need to wake up, you know, from slumber to take a drastic look, you know, on the character, vis-a-vis -vis the, 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 this, this, uh, this protest and whatever these guys have been saying about the protest. I think that is the right thing to, for them to do because that you are there today. You know, yes, the election era, the president has been confirmed. Uh, some of these elections are coming and they are going. But then what of the structure? Yeah. Three years my sound or look so far or so big, you know, but before you know it, three years is gone. Mm -hmm. then the people must have taken their position because you are not lording over yourself. You are leading people. And whoever is in the leadership position must know that leadership is transient. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Larry uh, Mnike and Rashida Degbemu. Uh, they are political analysts, but they're not going anywhere. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll be talking about the Police Service Commission. Of course, they are indebted, yes, and these debts are from... Judgments. So we're going to find out how they incurred these debts and, of course, how they intend to pay it. Stay with us.